Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go back to that first song. I really felt in my heart that we need to raise a hallelujah from your vocal cords this morning. Hallelujah. hallelujah. He says he can't do it himself. He can't praise for you. But I say we raise a hallelujah right now. Hallelujah. I say wherever you are right now, we raise, hallelujah. raise that hallelujah. hallelujah. Raise from my heart. Hallelujah. My chains are gone as we say. I raise the hallelujah, which is a thousand times thousand. Thank you to enter into his presence. I raise it from my own heart. I raise it with a heart of gratitude. I put away those things that weigh me down. And I raise that hallelujah. Hallelujah. And make that joyful sound unto my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David's the triumph was heard throughout the land. Hallelujah. He shouted and danced to the point where his own wife was mad at him. Hallelujah. But he raised that hallelujah. He triumphed in his Lord. He triumphed in the Lord because he raised the hallelujah. He triumphed in the Lord because he raised the hallelujah. He raised the praises of God. He said, I will become undignified even more so when he was criticized for raising his voice of triumph to God. He raised it the more. Hallelujah. He understood from the shepherd, skinny little shepherd boy that he was when he took down the lion and the bear that he raised the hallelujah and the anointing came on him and he took on that lion and he took on that bear and he killed it with his own hands when he when they tried to steal a sheep. It wasn't his might. It was the raise of the hallelujah. It was a song from his heart. It was a melody that he made as a constant meditation in his heart. Hallelujah. 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 Wave your hands unto God. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Tell him I'm sorry for being in the money ground. I'm sorry for allowing anything but your presence to inhabit me, inhabit my, my mouth. The Bible says don't let the words of God depart from your mouth as Joshua did. Then you shall have good success. Hallelujah. Do not let them depart. I raise that hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What cancer? <laughs> what what uh, broken ankle? What financial crisis? We have nothing but hallelujah in our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in our hearts. Hallelujah. We give no entrance to the enemy. We raise that hallelujah from our hearts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. A thousand times thank you. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Was this the first day of the week? The day that you were raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And we set our tone right now for the rest of the week. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Remind me to raise a hallelujah tomorrow. Remind me on Wednesday to raise a hallelujah. Remind me by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. For in His presence is fullness of joy. Without His presence there is sorrow and sighing. But the Bible says sighing and groaning has fled away. We are in the beloved Jesus. And in His presence is the fullness of joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. We have all come short of the glory of God. But in His presence is fullness of joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. The return of glory is in His presence when we sing the glory to God and give Him praise and honor. There is glory, which is the, the, the state of every believer. And according to John chapter 17, He passes glory on to us. My glory will I give to them. My power will I give unto them. My grace have I given to them. And they will overcome the wicked one. They will triumph in their Lord. Because they are in me. And I'm in them. 
Hallelujah. They go forth with the shout of triumph in their mouth, on their lips. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Oh, I feel so strong with that today. There's, there's, there's a, a pulling out of uh, the, the former things that have kept you down. Those things that have kept you prostrate yes. on the ground, they are not of God. They are not of God. They are not of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. They are of the enemy. Yes. And you are a child of God. Yes. Arise. Hallelujah. The Bible says He has made you a constant pageant of triumph. Never will He give you anything that is too hard. Never ever. Say never ever. Never, ever. Hallelujah. So arise to newness of life. Arise, arise, arise to this new day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, the devil, uh, he doesn't want you to spend a lot of time in praise and worship and prayer because that takes away from his time. That takes away from his abilities. And so he's going to fight you on praise. He's going to fight you on walking the floor and giving glory, even if it has to be done with tears. But he's going to fight you on that. Say, well, you, there's nothing there. You know, why should you praise him? He's going to fight you on your prayer, your prayer in the Spirit. But you go walking. You go walking in the things of God. Bible says, don't go where the sinners are in Psalms 1. Don't stop there. Don't stop where those that mock God, those that are uh, giving an evil report. But the way, and that's the way of the transgressor. That's not just committing sins. That's anything that is not of faith. Anything that is not of God. But walk in His counsel. Walk in His word. Walk above and not beneath. Be the head and not the tail. In all that he has said. See Jesus on the cross dying for every moment of your life. That it be a triumphant, a glorious, victorious life so that he may be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm sensing such an anointing on my hands right now. If you need hands laid on you right now, come out here. And there's such a tangible anointing. So everything can drop off. Anything and everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sean, come up here, please. Come up here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And the power of God's going to... Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yes. Oh, Ketima Sola Mande. Hallelujah. 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 Hole Mekina Handa Hase. See, that power came with the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You be being filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Saturate her temple from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Every cell, every nerve. We thank you, Father God, that you have all those thoughts that you had concerning your defeat. They're done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're gone. Hallelujah. Shout unto God with the Amen. voice of triumph Hallelujah. this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come right up here. Hallelujah. 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 This is it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for the glory, the glory, the fullness of the glory of God from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today marks a new day, a new beginning. Old things and habits are gone. In Jesus' name, you will walk in his triumph. You will walk above and not beneath. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Do not remember the former things. But walk in new paths that he will de designate to you. Isaiah 35, highways of holiness, of triumphant highways where no ravenous beast, no lion, nothing will touch you. And you will accelerate in the things of God. Those things that you stood for. Hallelujah. 
shall come speedily. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we do it by demonstration. See the word of God. Um, we do Marsha first. Hallelujah. Sister Marsha, would you stand with me up here? Sister Marsha is going to go back to Toronto for a couple of weeks, I believe. And uh, Sister Marsha has been such a blessing to all of us, especially the children. Um, she has come in and taken over uh, a very difficult situation, and she's uh, done remarkable with it. You could see all the time how enthusiastic she was for all the children. And are you paying any attention to yes, me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, and we, uh, we honor her for all the work that she has done. She's had no helpers. We're believing God that we're going to take, go from here higher and higher. But Marcia needs a, a, a break and going back to, how that, old is your dad, 93? My dad's 92 and my mom is 93. <laughs> They're clipping along. Clipping Hallelujah. Along. Hallelujah. Father God, mm -hmm. we just thank you for Marcia. Thank you for all that she has done to uphold Children's Church right now, Father God. And you're going to have to uh, direct us as we go forward, Father, but it's going to be excellent. And in this time of season, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, that Marcia would just, uh, again, just uh, sense uh, a strong relief and anointing. Father God, your presence, oh, Father God, your presence is what she seeks. Father God, she seeks you early in the morning. Yeah. She seeks you at night. She seeks you during the day, Father God. And in your presence is that fullness of joy. Father God, her heart is lifted high, Father God. Those things that uh, have um, uh, tried to attack her, Father God, uh, they're, they're overcome. It's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And we thank you for her faithfulness. We thank you for all that she has imparted into these wonderful children, Father God. Hallelujah. We give you honor and glory for Marcia. And safe travels to Toronto. Um, and we just, uh, we just thank you for the reunion again when we see her again. In Jesus' name, amen. And Marcia, we also have a, a gift for you. Thank you. you want to, it's a wonderful gift. It's, and, uh, um, this is an awesome gift. Um, Chet, can I tell her what it is? Mm. It's heavy. We gave you the, the best uh, Greek mind there, a Greek scholar by the Rick, Rick Renner. So there's everyday devotions. And I'll tell you what, when you think the word saints this year, go check what Rick says because he knows the original language and uh, 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 in Greek when the New Testament was written. And some of the stuff that thinks you think is going this way is actually going this way. And it will set you free. Every day you'll jump up with joy and victory. Amen? Wow, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, I love Pastor Dieter and I love Pastor Diana. And thank you for all your love and your support and your kindness. And it has been a very blessed time with the children, with Jesus. So thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Okay, something you, kids get to go. You get to go. Have one more time with Marcia today. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 See, that's all it takes to walk in that anointing. And you, you can be clamorously foolish at home. Do you know that you can be that? You, you, maybe some of you are. I mean, just, just, just make it a. It, it just happens so quickly because we said, no, we're going to raise a hallelujah. We're going to raise the standard. I don't care um, what you need to shut off the blender, the mixer, the TV, or whatever. You you got to dial it in with God. You got to get back into that with God on a daily basis. Amen. It's got to be uh, get to be. You get to be. Come on now. I'm sensing right now such a strong anointing that has gone through my body. I don't know if, if it's touching me physically. I haven't asked for anything. I'm already healed. What, what was troubling me a month and a half ago is done. I'm finished. And, uh, you know, I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm uh, overcoming. I've had four blood tests done in the last couple of years. And they are, and, and I want to be 100%. Billy Brim, 
uh, whose office, Canadian office we carry, went to the doctor, I'll go back, get back to mine in a second, and she's not pumping iron, she's not an athlete, she's not uh, anything uh, spectacular, and doesn't even take care of herself. Uh, well, she does, but, but with the Word of God. Word of God goes into her heart and uh, into her mind. And the doctor says, we have not seen such a good report of what's happening in your body. And she's how old now? 87 years old. Athletes don't have these kind of results. Amen. See, God wants longevity out of all of us. Long life, he will satisfy us and show us his salvation. That is honoring God. And when you think this life is only, if you take one grain of sand, and that's life on this earth, and every other piece of sand is eternity, that's still imbalanced because eternity will never stop. But we, 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 this little grain of sand that we have that is our life here, uh, I'll tell you what, we get to, this is why he died for, that we live it for his glory, that we give it all that we got right now. Whatever age you are, how young you are, how old, I wish, uh, Ashton, I wish I would have uh, got a hold of this here when I was seven years old. I tried a few things. Uh, I, <laughs> I tried a few faith things because even going to a Baptist church, I knew there was faith. Uh, that I could see in the Bible, if you ask and believe, we sang those songs in German. But we just didn't practice it. And so, uh, I'll get back to that in a sec, but my blood... The doctor said, amazing, just one thing I'm still working on. But other than that, they said, you're a poster child for this and this and that. And I'm, that, that's nothing uh, that, you know, that I have done. Yes, I do take supplements or, or take care fairly good of my body. But I believe the glory of God. God wants to work on your body. God's renewing your mind constantly. You cannot leave the temple of God and then be depressed all week long. It just can't, you just can't be doing that other than you say, God, I'm going to check out here. Now let's get depression. Um, um, come into me. And you, you don't want to do that. There's a song, Hello Darkness, My Old Friend. Anybody remember that? Back sinful days? And yeah, was it Simon Garfunkel or whoever sang that? Uh, Hello Darkness, My Old Friend. We don't go there. Amen. And a lot of Christians do. It's like, like we do church for an hour or Sunday, and uh, if we do make it and stuff like that, and then it's back to the grind. It's not supposed to be a grind. It's supposed to be a constant pageant of triumph. And so my excitement here this morning is that I get to share again with you what I am practicing, what I am doing uh, in my life so that we can overcome the enemy in every area. Say every area. Every area, every area of your life. And we're coming to a fork in the road where I believe if you're not uh, uh, someone that is uh, tanked up on the Word of God, this world is going to overrun you. It's going to uh, take heed what you hear. I can, oh, there's so many scriptures that come to mind right now. But take heed. Be careful because uh, out of your heart will come the issues of life. And so we want to be careful with what we put in and what comes out because this world is going to turn up the heat against Christianity. Do you know right now, there's a two-year-old child in Korea, because she uh, was, I think it was a she, carried the Bible, or had a Bible in her home. A two-year-old child and the parents are now lifelong in prison because they carried a Bible. And the judgment is, you are going to jail for life. See, the enemy hates God's word. The enemy wants to hurt people. You know, uh, maybe uh, we need to increase f uh, prayer for our brothers and sisters in Korea. Um, just horrible things that the enemy is doing to keep people from the Word of God. You're not allowed to have the Bible in your house. You're not allowed to be a Christian in that country. And, uh, you know, here we have the freedom to, and the enemy's knocking at, at Canada's door big time, United States. And right now, Folks, right now, let's make those adjustments right now to be full of uh, God now, full of enthusiasm now, full of those things that cause a constant pageant of triumph. Joshua 1, I uh, wasn't even going to go there, verse 8. This word shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. 
What would I want to do that for? Why can't I let it go and start complaining and grumbling? Why would I, would I, you know, start cussing and go with my friends to the bar? Because if the word of God is leaving your mouth, so will the victory. Come on now. I love you guys. So will the victory. It will, you cannot sustain. A part-time Christian will not win over a full-time devil. You cannot win when we're not participating in the things that God said to uh, build. Well, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves together. The Bible says, you know, take heed what you hear. You know, read your Bible, all that kind of stuff. Pray, pray without ceasing. The Bible talks about that constantly. And hopefully I'll get there today. You're going to see somebody die in uh, Acts chapter 12. Uh, and the church was playing games at that time. Or they weren't as intense, if I can put it that way. Then they got hot for God, or the next guy would have died. Well, hopefully we'll get there. But we're going to start in the 84th Psalm here this morning. Open your Bibles to Psalm 84. And let's see what victory looks like and what these people did. Because there's, there's a, I, I challenged you a few weeks ago, keep reading the Psalms. Uh, most of the Psalms are... You, you have uh, an encouraging word, and sometimes you have a guy that's, uh, Psalm 42, that's got a lot of trouble, but he remembers what it used to be like. We'll get to that in a second. But most Psalms start out good, and it tells you what to do. Then there's a few Psalms that you'd scratch your head over. Psalm 88 is a Psalm. It's the most sorrowful Psalm in the book of Psalms. You say, well, isn't that the word of God? It's in there. For one reason, and if you look at it, um, the man is trying to connect with God, but he's not connecting with God yet. You have to, when you go to a psalm like Psalm 88, you got to see this guy isn't hooked up with God. Number one, it's under the Old Testament. Number two, he hasn't got the blood. He hasn't got revelation knowledge. He hasn't got Jesus. He hasn't got, and he's trying to find his way with God. So all that he's doing in Psalm 88, I, I wouldn't put it on my fridge if I was paid to do it. He's whining and saying, oh, the pressure, oh, when will you come? Oh, God, when come? come? So there's no answer in that. It shows you how sorrowful life is without our Savior. So um, that's where um, you've got to take the Bible says, rightfully divide the Word of God. I don't take a lot of things out of the book of Job unless... Um, because at the beginning of Job, Job was perfect, and he did nothing or said nothing wrong. And then starting in chapter 3, he goes wild with accusations against God. They contradict many things in the New Testament. So I will take what John 1 says, where Jesus says, I come to show you the Father. Um, I come to show you, I, I spend time with the Father is basically what he's saying. I'm going to show you the Father. And uh, so that's where even the Father, at the end of the book of Job, said, Job, will you please shut up? Quits, really, that's what he's saying um, in, in our modern vernacular. Put your hand over your mouth because you're saying foolish things. So who would go back into the book of Job without making sure that it is truthful to the New Testament and start quoting stuff out of there? Now, there's good stuff in there, but, um, you know, and I have taken scriptures out of there, but you've got to be careful when you divide the Word of God. Divide it accurately. And if you don't know how, we have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. You don't have any contradictions in the Word of God. You just have um, different time periods when God spoke. You have people that, you know, uh, backslid. You have people that weren't reading the Bible. You have people that... Uh, um, um, you know, we're living in sin, and the end result, the Israelites, for example. How many times did they live in sin, and all of a sudden, everything went backwards again? Then they got right with God, they repented, and everything got right, turned out around right again. Amen? Go back to what I shared a few weeks ago, an 11-day journey. God says, I got a land of milk and honey. Could you see the Godhead being excited? You people, you're, you're my people, right? You're my people, right? I'm delivering you. I, I don't, not one people one amongst you. They have prosperity. They had everything. And they're leaving Egypt behind. The only problem is they didn't leave it behind in their heart. They remembered Egypt. 
They constantly said, oh, if we could go back. They constantly snipped off the support line that God had for them. They were okay with their children, you know, making uh, bricks without straw and just, you know, nine to five, punching the time clock, you know, whatever, and just barely having enough food and having no freedom. They were okay with that. And when God says there's a deliverance, then that follow me, just like the New Testament, seek first the kingdom of God. Then all these things will be added unto you. Seek first. Seek first. Tomorrow I'm going to phone you. Seek first. Tuesday, seek first, Sean. Amen. I'm busy. I got 10 people living in my house, plus two renters. My septic field is crying. Seek first. Amen. I'm busy. I got kids. Yeah, they were up. I was up at 4 o'clock, uh, 4.25 this morning, and it wasn't shortly after that one of them, the little ones was down. Seek first. I'm seeking him early in the morning. I got no excuses. I got no excuses. Amen. So let's find out in Psalm 84 um, the heart of uh, David, or in this case, uh, uh, case uh, one of the sons of Korah. It says, verse 4, Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied. Take those words literally. You will be blessed. You will be happy. You will be fortunate. You will go like, wow, I can't believe that. Well, thank you. wouldn't say that word. I can't believe. You would say, God has been good to me. My seed is coming in. I cast my bread on every water, and every wave is bringing a blessing for me. Amen? That's your story, right, Tom? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know you lied about that, but well, for, God will forgive you. But, you know, I'm, I'm pulling on answers. I want Tom's life and Renee's life to, because they've sown seed, they're tithers, I want them to, to every way to bring back another blessing. That's God's plan. He didn't say cast it on the water and bye-bye. It's going to come back on every wave. Say that with me. It's going to come back on every wave. Amen. So guess what? The life of the believer is blessed, happy, fortunate. Psalm 84, 4. To be envied are those who dwell in your house and your presence. They will be singing, singing your praises all the day long. How long? I can't hear you. No, I can't hear you. Amen. All day long. Praise God. Whatever the doctor's report, whatever, and, um, may happen all the day long. Those people that go to the house sing, sing, sing. Why sing? Because just like a few minutes ago, he came down as we kept praising and singing and speaking the name. The presence came down stronger. You're pulling from the other realm through your singing, and he inhabits the praises of God's people. Amen. And so I want to do that. I want to. So this, the writer is telling you that um, those that dwell in your house and your presence, they will be singing your praises all day long. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man whose strength is in you. Hallelujah. Jesus says we're in the world, but we're not of the world, and He's overcome the world. Amen. So verse six. That's that. That's why we can uh, say with. Uh, confidence in verse 6 passing through the valley of weeping they make it a place of springs passing through a valley of weeping oh see pastor you just can never tell what tomorrow brings no 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 wait a minute passing through this valley first i remember this certain evangelist the biggest guy had, i remember when he shared on this it just it's still lodged in my heart because i was so frustrated because he looked with such a miserable face passing through the valley of weeping. They make it a strength. And I'm like, there's no hope in that. You're telling me that, that uh, there's weeping coming. It could be tomorrow. And I had enough trouble. I had enough trouble at home. We couldn't sell a bakery until I, I finally was so frustrated. I did a hunger strike. And, and uh, our bakery sold in three days after that. This was the one in Prince George. Did some other stuff for the one to sell here. But frustrated with my life. Going nowhere fast. Amen? And then somebody tells you you're passing through the valley of weeping. Well, finish it, please. You're passing. You have opportunity to weep with those that are in the weeping valley. 
That's what they call it. When you go for, travel from here to, to Banff, there's different valleys. Like, you know, the glaciers, they name it. Why? Because there's glaciers there. And then there's this valley and that way, valley. And it's all because that's what's, what the opportunity there is to take. To take in that. But what the Bible says here is when you pass, say pass. You're not staying. Psalms 1. You're passing through the valley or weeping. They, say they, they, not God, they make it a place of springs, of early rain, and uh, our rain also fills the pools with blessings. You're not staying there, and because you chose not to stay there, but just pass, and not, you know, when we go from here to Bath, we don't take a lot of, or wherever we drive, we don't really pull over and take a lot of time on the side of the road. We just want to get to the destination quite often. Except for Banff is nice and all that, but, um, you know, we've seen it quite often. But a lot of people camp in this valley, this valley of discouragement, this valley of weeping. And, uh, but, and they stay there thinking, reading the psalm, or maybe reading the 88th psalm, uh, they say, well... Maybe that's where I'm supposed to live. No. Go through it. A thousand may drop at one side. Ten thousand at the other. But it shall not come near you. Hallelujah. You're not there yet. A thousand at one side. Ten thousand at the other. But it shall not come near you. That's right. That's right. Psalm 91. It shall not. What shall not? You're going to be above and not beneath. The head and not the tail. I, if anything, all my life I've wanted to bust false religion. I grew up in a church where, uh, you know, I shared one week where, where accidents were the voice of God. God gives cancer to teach. God kills children to teach. God, um, you know, oh, you just got to stay faithful because you never know what God's going to do. And if anything ever got me to go uh, flip my middle finger at the church and say, I'm out of here, I was that close. I was going down the stairs of the church saying, bye, I'm not coming back. And then a lady said, wait a minute, I got a book for you. Right timing from God is Brother Hagin's book on don't blame God. And my little wagon, which was going in the wrong direction fast, was turned and stopped. So if I can help somebody else to get out of the valley of weeping, to get out of discouragement, to get out of any situation that's pulling you back, it's never God. God did not pick you to be a Job. God did not pick you to be uh, uh, some kind of martyr or something like that. God wants you to have a constant passion of triumph. So you pass through this valley to, and you, 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 it says, they make it a place of springs, of life. You come into the valley and you make it a place of blessing. It was not designed for blessing. It was the weeping valley, but you you, you chose it to be a place of blessing. Amen? Hallelujah. You chose it. You, according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen? Your faith, be it unto you. And that's in everything. That's not just healing. That's uh, whatever the enemy is trying to throw at you. But watch this here. It gets even better. Verse 7. They go from strength to strength, increasing in victory power. Each of them appears before God in Zion. That's why I want to live there. Where? Where do I want to live? Verse 10. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. One day under the anointing. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we had the temple here? Uh, okay, I'll tell you, this is a trick question. And so, wouldn't it be nice if there was a temple here with a big curtain and the Ark of the Covenant and we could all walk in there and receive from God? It's a trick question. I know some of you are like, which way are you tricking me here now? You know, guess what? He said, I don't want that kind of house. And he ripped the curtain. He came out of there. Amen. He come out of there and he says, wait in the upper room. 
I'm going to send you that power in the form of the Holy Spirit. Wait, Terry, pray, stay, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm sure they were sitting there saying, I got stuff on the stove. I'm sure they were sitting there saying, I got friends to meet at the mall. Wait, stay, stay before God, stay. You got a trouble situation, stay. Is there sickness in your body, stay. Is there marriage problem? How about your children? Amen. Stay in the presence of God. He said to stay and do not even leave until this power is come down upon you. Do not go out there. Don't try to be... Remember I said to you, missionaries go overseas from a certain denomination and they come back and say, the people are in prayer. And other denominations are praying for people, but we're not allowed to speak in tongues or lay hands on the sick under this denomination. So this denomination headquarters said, okay, overseas, you're allowed to pray in tongues and put your hands on people, but not here in North America. Does that make sense to you? Somebody's playing God. Somebody's trying to keep tongues and, and uh, laying on of hands away from, from you as believers. You are powerful as you sit here this morning. For one day in a court is better than a thousand elsewhere. No, I don't care about any building right now, whether it be this building or some kind of temple set up, because that was past. I had rather be a doorkeeper and stand at the threshold of the house of God than to dwell at ease in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord, verse 11, is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows Present grace and favor, grace and favor, and future glory, 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 honor, splendor. See, that's all God. Can you see any weeping valley here? Somebody pulled it together and walked through that valley, and now he's in the, he's saying, and you can have this every day. We have it right now. The presence of God. You don't need to necessarily feel anything, but it happens if you, if you, um, the Bible says renew your mind. And so we, um, we, we know. I mean, I walk, we have it on our mirror. I'm anointed on a level the world is unfamiliar with, all for the glory of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Why? I'm not letting go of that. I'm not allowing, you know, let's say uh, the dog uh, bothered me, my wife bothered me, the kids bother me. Oh, my anointing's gone. Don't be like that. This is the most valuable treasure, the pre preciousness of the Holy Spirit, the pearl of great price that came into you, the kingdom of God and all his principles. You are anointed on a level the world is unfamiliar with, all for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Don't go back to your normal self. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Signs, wonders, and miracles is what's, this is what he's talking about here. It says, for the Lord is your son and shield. The Lord bestows all he wants to so badly on everybody in this place. Grace, which is God's heavenly supply. It's, he's a many-breasted one. He's fully loaded for you today. Amen. In every area of your life. He never ever, when you, those that come to him must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Did you hear the word diligently in there? Diligently. You're about your father's business. Seek first the kingdom of God. Diligently, we go there. Hallelujah. Don't let go. Sean, don't let go. Don't ever let go. You're a man of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, we could all have our own personal tutors, you know. If I came to your house every morning and started preaching like this, would that change your day? Yes. Amen. But I can't be there, Sean. <laughs> Amen. I'd like to be there and then come to your house and then come to your house and everything like that. And uh, first of all, I need someone to come to my house. But no, i got to stir yourself praying in the Holy Ghost. You stir yourself up praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up on your most holy faith, reading books, uh, getting information inside of you, keeping it hot. Hallelujah. Praise God. So what happens in this? Grace, favor, and future glory. Glory. Well, Jesus gave us that. This is Old Testament. But he's saying when Jesus leaves, his glory is going to be deposited on you. Why would I want that? Because today I might go to the mall and somebody uh, may need help. Somebody may need hands laid on them. 
They may come find me. I may go somewhere else at a car show, brother, where somebody may say, what is it about you? And it's not that we have to work it up, but we have to know about it. It's got to be in here. It's got to, it is in there, but we got to know what's in there. That's what I, if I leave in 1 6 says that the communication or our lifestyle of faith or our lifestyle as a Christian or our lifestyle as a believer looking like Jesus, the communication of our faith will be effectual by acknowledging everything that's inside of us. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to skip that. And skip over here. I want to show you this example that hit me really hard this week in a good way. Hallelujah. That is in Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. About that time, here at the king stretched forth his hand to afflict and oppress and torment some who belong to the church assembly. Well, that's okay. We're going to have persecution. I'm telling you, people are opening the door way too wide for persecution. When he has got his army, when he's got his, his uh, anointing on you, there's people that I know that have stood with the KGB coming in. I heard them say personally, the whole KGB come in with machine guns, and they said, there's nobody in this room, and they left. In other places, uh, a building, a church gets burnt down with the people in it. I don't find that in Scripture. It's happened. They went to glory. But I'm wondering, I, I, this is just my observance, I'm wondering what the people were taught. You know, folks, we're, we, um, persecution is going to come. And, and the, you know, the ISIS is around us and, and we're going to, uh, you know... You know, whatever comes upon us will be, will be, that's the Lord's will. I don't know. But I'm seeing people win with using the word. And I'm seeing people lose by not using the word. Or there should be uh, no... Um, I'll show you this here. In, in the, so Herod is here. He's killing people. He's killing Christians. So it's no different as it's going to be coming up if we're not careful. The uh, COVID thing was only a test run to see how obedient you're going to be. And they're going to come. They have a, about a dozen things that they plan, which, which I'm not, the, they're not going to win if we hold on to everything that I read out of Psalm 84. In His presence is fullness of joy. In His presence, they can't touch you. Remember Jesus, when He was going to be pushed off a cliff one time? He got up there and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Same thing I want you to do. He has anointed me. Same thing I want you to do. Yes. To preach the gospel to the poor. Recovering of sight to the blind. All these wonderful things. Then he closed up the book and he sat down in, a, in what was the God chair. And all of a sudden everybody started gnashing at their eyes. Everybody liked him before. And he was faithful in that church. He kept teaching in that church. But all of a sudden, when he made that step that we starting to new kingdom, this day, the scripture is fulfilled in your ear. That moment, everybody got mad at him. Okay? So they get mad. So your relatives hate you. So they don't want to talk to you. What are we going to do? So they come at you with a knife. I saw it with Rodney Howard Brown. Somebody, a gangster, was coming at him with a knife. And something like that. And all he did, he's standing there like that, and the gangster got saved. I don't know all the ins and outs I should have, uh, but, but it said, gangster came to take him out. And he's not the only one. What about Earl Roberts? What about the, um, um, the big guy? No, white, white big guy. I'll get on it in a second here. No, he's... Uh, I'll get it here in a second. But he had bullets, and they, the, the trajectory of the bullets. Terry Mize, yeah. too. Yes, but it was um, John Hagee. John Hagee. Guy shot a gun from here. And he says, Why are you not dead? It's because the bullets were moved. Now, what is the difference between a minister that got shot or a person that got run over and somebody that is, is doing Psalm 84 and ending up alive? 
I would rather try Psalm and do Psalm 84 and, and have total disregard, you know, like to some people like, oh, your vehicle has to have 47 airbags. I've got angels. My car is 50 years old. It doesn't wrinkle like the new ones. I don't know what would happen if I crashed it in the wall. I don't plan on doing that. But I have angels all around. And that's the best way to go to the store. You know, thank you, Lord. Just don't do a burnout in the parking lot. But, <laughs> but uh, so some people are like, oh, you're looking at everything in the natural to protect you. What about the Holy Ghost? What about what is supposed to be happening on the inside 24-7? I believe, I firmly believe this, and if I'm wrong, may the Lord correct me, I firmly believe much of the trouble will be put aside, and you have another day. With long life will He satisfy you. Psalm 91 was written for everybody. Amen. Alright, so here, here we have pressure. Pressure like we're going into. Pressure like in Korea right now. Pressure like in China. All over the place. There's, there's a nation after nation that does not want the word of God. They don't pick on Buddha, Muhammad and all these kind of stuff because they were dead. They don't like Christians. Christianity. So what is the force behind them? The enemy, obviously. Amen. And so uh, here he is. Um, um, the, the, the Herod makes this decree and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Not cool. Say not cool. Because Psalm 91 was written for him too. And when, when he saw that it was pleasing to the Jews, it wasn't the will of God. It was pleasing to the Jews. Why? Why the Jews? Because Jesus came and began a new life for all of us to live in constant pageant of triumph. And the Jews didn't have that. So he saw it was pleasing to the Jews. He proceeded further to arrest Peter also. This was during the day of the unleavened bread. And when he had seized Peter, he's going for the next guy. These guys are supposed to turn the world upside down. Uh, you know, do whatever uh, to get the gospel going. When, he, when he, saw, he seized Peter, he put him into prison and delivered him to, uh, to four squads of soldiers of four each. How many guards? Come on, young man. Of four. Groups. Oh, four. Sixteen guards. One guy. I mean, those are heavy hitters, right? They're there to, to make sure he stays in there. So he's in there uh, purposing after the Passover to bring him forth to the people. And do what? To be out of court, trial, and all kind of stuff, and be put to death. So Peter was kept in prison, but, but, here's the but, here's a church doing something, waking up after the first guy got killed and making sure the second guy doesn't get killed. God doesn't have a little, you know, like spin the wheel, like, like, uh, like wheel of fortune, you know, oh, Peter dies today, or uh, James dies and Peter lives. You know, let's just randomly just go around and do that. No, with long life, will he satisfy you? Amen. And so with fervent prayer, say fervent prayer, they knew they were in trouble. And finally they got serious. Serious to have that anointing. Serious to be walking in, hey God, this is going the wrong way. Why are they killing the leaders? We've got to do something about this here. Amen. Didn't do it for the first guy, but finally the church got smart and did it for the second guy. And uh, fervent prayer was given persistently made by... To God by the church assembly. Come on now, we got Wednesday night prayers and we're lighting it up on Wednesday nights. Amen. You got situations? Maybe we, you got to come out Wednesday nights uh, every second week and pray with us. Because we're walking the floor. We're, we're hanging on to stuff. We're believing for stuff. The very night before Herod was about to bring him forth, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with two chains. And centuries before the door, the guard, uh, the guarding the prison. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared. Oh, just suddenly. A lazy angel maybe, maybe just had nothing better to do. No, the angel came because of fervent prayer. Because the Bible says, Psalm 120, they hearken unto the voice of a fervent church. So, 
you, you can say, no, it's just random. No, I'm saying it's, it's deliberate. Deliberate rescue of Peter. I'll ask him up there when I get there. James, were you supposed to die when you died? Firm prayer, all right. So they all fasted and prayed. And suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared, standing beside Peter, verse 7, and a light shone in the place where he was. And the angel gently smote Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. I'm telling you, I got into a serious truck accident, and there was a ton of prayer, or else I don't think I would be here right now. I would have gone home, Acts 12. I would have gone home early. Foolishly, because I got charged with six points. Driving, undue care and attention. Um, driving tired. Driving, I don't know if I was speeding at that point, but, but driving and somebody picked it up in the spirit weeks before. Even that day, someone said, we've got to pray for the pastor. Uh, my, even my wife and the kids were on the field and they also, I don't know what, we've got to pray. Guess what if nobody prayed? I don't think I'd be here. I'll be that honest. I'm not good enough or God saying, well, we like Dieter. Let's, 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 let's let him act foolish and save him anyways. There's deliberate actions taken to change destinies. Hallelujah. All right, so the angel came. We all know that. And then he wrapped on his outer garment, verse 9, and Peter went out along... Um, Along following the angel, uh, verse 9, and he was not conscious that what was apparently being done by the angel was real. <laughs> but, uh, hallelujah. So you might not even know if it's real or not, but the church was what? They were praying, fervent prayers, prayer. What's going to change victory life? What's going to change your family? Fervent prayer. Going forth. No, oh, God, do something. He says you pray. Is any... You don't believe me? James chapter 3. Nope. Sorry. James chapter 5. Is anyone among you afflicted, ill-treated, suffering evil? Is any of you? Tax collector coming after you? Is any money afflicted, ill treated, suffering evil? Pray. He should pray. He should pray. He should pray. What kind of prayer? Exactly like the fervent church in Acts chapter 12. Is anyone glad of heart? I am. I've got to be there all the time. He should sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? He should call for the church elders, the spiritual guides, and they should pray over him, anointing him with oil of the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. In other words, God says, let's get down to business. I didn't do that. I don't kill people. I don't pay, make people sick. And when there's, if you're ill-treated or something happens, whatever, you pray. Take a friend and pray. Come on, we got it. Hallelujah. Let's get out of this here. Amen. All right, in closing. And uh, so Peter's at the gate. And when he's at the, he's at the gate, and he was knocking at the gate of the porch, a maid named Rhoda, this is verse 13, uh, came to answer, and recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy, she failed to open the gate. So they were praising God for his delivery, but she was so excited, she ran back in the house, but ran in and told the people that Peter is standing out by the porch. And they said to her, you're crazy. I don't know, maybe half of them didn't have faith, but somebody says, you're crazy. And the whole time, they were doing fervent prayer. So I'm trying to balance this out here. What are they saying? Were they in faith at all? Who was in faith? I'm telling you, I don't want to, when the answer stands on my door, I don't want to say you're crazy. I want to say, my fervent prayer got this job done. Amen. And so anyway, so when they opened the door, and meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. Guys, your answer is standing here. And when they opened the gate, they saw it was him, and they were all amazed. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to be amazed that cancer's dropped off, that somebody got pregnant the other week. Amen. I shouldn't be amazed. It's a daily, well, this is our job. This is our assignment. Jesus is God. Amen. And he's good all the time. Hallelujah. So if you're here today and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, 
The Bible says in Romans 10 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. You get into this great plan that he has for you. Kingdom, kingdom principles. No more old stuff. You get to, with a renewed mind, you get to walk in God's ways, which are always going to take you higher. Amen. Hallelujah. So say this after me. This is how we come in. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, so we're going to do that. We're going to confess, confess with my, our mouth, believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord. So say this with me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you died for all of my sins. I confess you now with my mouth. I believe it in my heart. And therefore, I am now a child of God. Because you said, call on the name of the Lord to be saved. Hallelujah. Well, that makes you a child of God. Amen. You get to. Oh, is there anything that compares to the goodness of God, what I shared today? Do we want anything else? Yeah, we do hobbies and these things, but Jesus is our everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. How about we stand again? We've been sitting for a while. I'm going to take some time after the service. Thank you so much for bringing some goodies. There's goodies back there, so do not leave without, um, you know, taking some of that, eating some of that, and fellowshipping with those that are here this morning. And we'll give you opportunity to meet and, and greet them and, and so forth. All right. Okay. You can be seated again just for, just for a couple of minutes as I do announcements. Um, we've got a new bulletin, so grab the bulletin. Find out what's happening, when, where. Tom, I know that we have a back-to-school slide somewhere. Do you have that? Just put that up. That is happening August the 26th. I think we put that into your bulletins. Um, if you're able to help, make sure to connect with me or, you know, uh, connect with the office. We need help. We need people that, that will be volunteering that morning. Um, you know, and then we'll we'll go from there. But we have 430 backpacks that we're handing out. We've already ordered the backpacks, and um, they'll be coming the first week of August. And be praying for that. Like, who's supposed to get those backpacks? We put it out there to different uh, places, women shelters, social service areas. That um, you know, we want to help those that that need the help. Amen. And so 430 backpacks going to the right person August the 26th that morning. And we'll give them refreshments, working on a bouncy house, different things like that. So, yeah, we need people to man that. Um, again, this this week, look in your bulletin. There is no prayer this this Wednesday. It's the, the week after. So this is the week that it's not. Um, Friday, la ladies' prayer. There's a warrior fellowship. And um, coming up to in September, so Sue, wave. Everybody knows Sue. She's, she's leading, again, a prayer bi Bible study. And in your bulletin should have been a sign-up sheet. If not, it's at the, at the front. Sign up for that if you're interested. Uh, I'll start bringing the prayer book here. It's $20. You can get ready to sign up for that and um, go from there. Now, you heard this morning that Marsha is, is uh, literally needing a break, and she'll be heading back to Toronto for a little bit to help her mom and dad. And so we um, have a card. If you did not get opportunity to sign that card, do you have that card now? Somewhere the card is. If you haven't, let's make sure it comes up front here, and then whoever hasn't, you know, you can sign it. Oh, it's on my seat now. Okay, so it's up front. So if you haven't signed it, let's make sure to, you know, sign that so that we just send her off, um, you know, blessed and knowing that, you know, we love her, right? She's done such a great job helping. Now, I have this this morning as well. This in here is six little coupons for Donna Ray Farm and six coupons for McDonald's. What we do, uh, we've handed these out at Easter, but I still have more, and we're going to hand out more at the Back to School Bash. But I'm bringing my excess to you this morning that I would love to challenge you guys to take one of these. If you've never gone, take one for yourself, and then take one for someone else, a family that I would say under the age of 12, it's a little petting zoo. 
it is so much. How many have you have ever gone there? Have you taken your grandkids, any of you? It's fun. I went there the other day, and they've got some animals. And then the best part is, is you get to go over to the, they have a fruit, beautiful fruit and vegetable stand. Uh, even for that alone, it's, it's great. But they have an ice cream little parlor. This is the best ice cream ever, and it's so reasonably priced compared to Moolix and some of the other places. So you, I don't know, it's just, just a great place, and it's a great opportunity to be a blessing to somebody. So I'm going to leave them up here. If you've never gone, grab one uh, for yourself, and then grab one for someone else. And even if you don't have kids of your own, can you think of a family that you can bless? Because there is enough there for six people. So usually we put it together as one family. So I've got about 10 or 12 of them, but I'd love to see you take those and uh, be a blessing. Amen? Well, let's stand. Free books are in the back as well. I know I always forget about tithing and offering. <laughs> if you're tithing and, and giving an offering this morning, there is a, a container over there with a V on it that you can place your checks and your cash. You can give online as well. That's, that's on the, the back uh, wall as well. And uh, thank you for being faithful. That's what buys those 430 backpacks. And from that, it just keeps going and going and going, and we get to bless other people. Amen. Well, let's say this in closing. I am, has, let's say it together. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God says I can do. Amen. Amen. Blessings to you. Shalom. Which means what? Nothing missing. Nothing broken, wholeness over you this week. Amen? All right, and make sure to go grab some goodies. Amen.